Adele Jordan. And I'm Danielle Jordan. And, and yes, we, we are related. related. Welcome, Welcome to the transcript. This week, the transcript investigates the UN climate report, tees off with the golf team, looks into what it takes to be a service dog, checks in with Northampton's religious leaders, Hurricane Michael made landfall near Mexico Beach, Florida, early Wednesday afternoon. This is the first Category 4 or stronger hurricane that has hit the Florida Panhandle. The National Hurricane Center said that Hurricane Michael is moving further inland, but it remains extremely dangerous. Forecasters say Michael will continue to produce damaging winds and life-threatening flash flooding in the Florida Panhandle and Big Bend regions into portions of southeast Alabama, Georgia, North and South Carolina, and southeast Virginia. On Sunday, Taylor Swift stirred controversy when she posted a picture on Instagram about how she's endorsing Democratic candidates running for Tennessee. Swift spoke on her political views too, saying, always have and always will cast my vote based on which candidate will protect and fight for the human rights I believe we all deserve in this country. UN Ambassador Nikki Haley is stepping down. Haley was South Carolina's first female and Indian American governor from 2011 to 2017. During the 2016 election, she often criticized Donald Trump. When Trump became president, he appointed her to represent the U.S. at the UN. Haley said she wanted a break from more than a decade in public service and might take a job in the private sector. Trump says this was always part of the plan and that Haley warned him about this months ago. Hi, I'm Sarah Fina Foreman. And I'm Willa Sipple. Welcome to Tell It Like It Is. On Saturday, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released a report that called for urgent action. It stated that over the next 12 years, we need to prevent the 1.5 degrees Celsius predicted increase in global temperatures. To learn more about the impact that humans have on the planet, we spoke with New York Times best-selling author and climate writer, Alan Wiseman. Well, the UN has told us that this figure that everyone had in their mind after the Paris Climate Accords a few years ago, that somehow two degrees centigrade increase over pre-industrial temperatures was going to be the safe threshold for us. That's not true. Some of the things that are happening on this planet are really driven by these extreme changes. I mean, take the terrible war that we have seen in Syria. That was prompted by what is a 12-year drought. It's not going to be safe. We, if we get to two degrees centigrade, we're going to have catastrophic changes going on on the planet that even if we stopped all of our carbon dioxide emissions, those changes would be feeding on each other and they would just keep warming the earth. One of the first things we can do is get out the vote to make sure that people who understand this problem are going to be the kinds of people that we elect. We're off to a good start, but we need the political will to encourage that good start to continue and then industry will follow. So we still have a long way to go to start making those changes that we have to make. We also sat down with UN specialist in technology and conservation and climate change, Clea Paz. But what we need to do is to do this transformation now, reduce 45% by 2030 and trying to reach this net, net, zero, global, uh, net zero emissions by 2050 if we want to reach this target of, of not going above 1.5 degrees. That what I work on especially is on, on nature-based solutions, and that's my area of expertise. So there's a lot that we could do to manage the land better and to protect forests. Cutting forests, we're cutting forests at a really alarming rate right now. If we stop cutting forests and especially burning forests, you heard all the fires in California, the fires in the Amazon, and, and in other regions said, you know, the, the most important thing is we need to get the political will with, from all the governments in the world to implement this transformation. Uh, but not only national governments, also subnational governments, you know, cities, uh, local governments can do a lot and citizens as well. If you want to get involved, check out the Environmental Club, which meets Tuesdays at 2. And don't forget, next week is Vegetarian Week. Thanks for watching. This was Tell It Like It Is.
Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? The golf team has seen a large turnaround in just two seasons. After a wrenching 2-15 finish during 2016, the team now currently holds a positive record with a good chance of making the Western Mass Invitational. Like most teams here at NHS, golf moved down a division into a smaller league, which worked for their benefit, allowing the team to show their true potential. To learn about the league adjustment, their senior year golf experience, and the possibility of making Western Mass, I talked with seniors Jason Cooper and Asa Geller. So the drop in the league was really important for our team because we were, we were matched up against teams like Minichog and Longmeadow pretty much every week, and now we play them roughly once a season. So our team was actually better overall a couple years ago, but we were just playing much harder competition. We're playing teams that are actually our size, so that gives us a better chance to win games. So this year we have the coach, uh, Mike Chaplin, who was our assistant last year, and um, He's just brought, like, really, for me at least, like, more of awareness to the mental game of golf and just taking each hole or taking the game by hole by hole or shot by shot instead of getting frustrated and hitting a bad shot and then, you know, carrying that with you th throughout the rest of the round. So I wouldn't say that golf is, like, requires a lot of physical ability. I would say that it's more, like, natural athletic ability. Um, like one of the great things about golf is that you can play it throughout your entire life and like anyone can be good at golf no matter what your age is. I mean once you get older you can still be good. It's a sport that you can get better at as you age which is unique. Yeah golf is all about technique it's really not about raw power so um, even the most unathletic people can still be good golfers if they work to get their technique down. Qualifying for Western Mass has always been one of my goals ever since I started playing golf, so um, it's, pretty, it's a good feeling that we could do that this year. Definitely feels good. The golf team has their next match on Tuesday, October 16th, against South Hadley High School. Field hockey has a home game today at 4 p.m. against Minichog. Boys soccer is also home tonight at 6 o'clock against East Long Meadow. And tomorrow, football has a away game at 6 p.m. in Wakona. A friendly reminder, I only mention sporting events that happen today or tomorrow. So if you're looking for a specific team sports schedule, visit MIAA website. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Alexa. If any of you have a pet at home, you can understand that spending time with animals can alleviate stress and anxiety. Recently, therapy dogs have been integrated into many school and work environments. This week, we sat down with owners of local therapy dogs and looked into the possibility of NHS getting our very own emotional support dog. Um, my name is Gwen Agna, and I'm the principal of the Jackson Street Elementary School. Our emotional support dog is Jackson. Jackson! Come here. Here's Jackson, the emotional support dog with his special pig. <laughs> he is a good boy. Jackson has had a tremendous effect on our school. He has made people smile a lot more. <laughs> he has made people be excited about coming to school. I hear from families that go home and tell stories about when he came to their classroom. We had a special assembly that talked about the ways that the students would need to relate to him and so uh, we learned that there would needed to be a lot of preparation. I have also had many students who have been in the need for emotional support. One who found out he had to move to New York and it was only a few days away and he was crying and so we got Jackson to sit with him. He still s was sad but it made him feel better so it's really he's had a big effect on our school. The training of service and therapy animals is an extensive process. The average time it takes to train a service animal ranges from four months to two years, depending on the skill. We were able to talk to a certified dog trainer, Sharon Walshler, to get an insight on the characteristics of a service dog. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into um, being a good service dog candidate. The dogs that are most likely to enjoy and be suited to service dog work are dogs that are very social and friendly, uh, love people, love other dogs, um, very comfortable and relaxed around uh, novelty, meaning things that they 
might not be that familiar with. The dog has to be trained to perform work or tasks that directly relate to the handler's disability. Um, so it can't just be that the presence of the dog makes the person feel better. The dog has to be trained to reliably do something that assists the person. So it, it you know, it varies from situation to situation. What you train the dog to do is based on what will improve the, the functionality of the handler. Trained animals are able to provide support and aid to many people with mental or medical disabilities. An emotional support dog in NHS would hopefully relieve much of the anxiety linked with school or personal life. For more information on Douglas the Therapy Dog, contact Melissa Powergreen or take a look at the flyers hanging around the building. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Tomorrow is National Yarn Day. Nice! In other news... Northampton is a vibrant community where many different faiths coexist. This week, I sat down with leaders of some of our religious groups in the area to learn about how their congregations have positively affected our community in these tumultuous times. Abundance Farm uh, was started about six years ago, and uh, the genesis of it is that the synagogue purchased land that is now Abundance Farm from the city about 15 years ago, and the other side of Abundance Farm is a Department of Public Works building. Congregation B'nai Israel has a very active social justice um, uh, committee and it's a very active social justice community. Um, uh, the other rabbi, Rabbi Justin David, who's the spiritual leader here, is, um, is a nationally kind of national leader in the Jewish community around social justice. He's been arrested twice you know, within the lot, you know, since the election, protesting uh, immigration. First of all, our youth group is youth-led, so basically the foundation of how the youth group works is that the youth are learning how to be leaders, um, and I think that that's a really important way for them to get involved in social justice because they're realizing that they can really lead. Um, and they have initiated on their own a racial justice project. So they've brought in a consultant to talk to them about racial justice and look at the systems within their youth group and then within the church at large to see how they can improve um, the ways they're looking at white supremacy and inclusion and things like that. The first thing that comes to mind is that we have somebody living in sanctuary right now. Um, so it's somebody who is facing deportation. She actually, she's the mother of three kids. Um, so we've brought her in to be safe um, here, right in Northampton. And it, there's a lot of people in the community, whether it's Northampton or East Hampton or Deerfield, who've gotten involved to help out. So people bring meals to her or um, just volunteer to be in the church to help out. Um, so that's been a really neat way for different people to come together and get to help out and also to learn about what sanctuary is and learn about what's happening with immigration. Thanks for watching and congratulations to all the students who took standardized tests this week. Bye! Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching! The transcript premieres every Friday morning. Episodes can be found at nhstechnology.org. Bye! Bye.